Hi, I'm Mike Daniels and I'm live with the Land Sport Aviation Showcase. And we're here today talking to Roger Hilton, his name's on his shirt right there. Um, <laughs> of, uh, no, if I butcher the name, please correct me, but Super Patrol USA. That's perfect, and absolutely. As a seaplane pilot, I've been drooling over this thing since I first saw it in Sun and Fun a few years ago. It is a beautiful plane. And I gotta say this before we start too, I was at the uh, seaplane base at Oshkosh a couple years ago. Yes. And another aircraft manufacturer was doing little demos. And then when they got through doing their scheduled presentation, they had this out on the water speeding it around and oh it was, looked amazing so roger tell me about this aircraft and on the water we kind of we, we refer to it as a very expensive jet ski but nice when it comes to airplanes it's a very very flyable easy to fly airplane the uh the design of the airplane with the two wings basically gives you over 160 feet of square wing area to work with so the amount of lift and a 30 foot of wingspan uh, provides for you is is incredible amount so we don't need to have flaps the airplane's got a stall speed of 40 miles an hour so with a 40 mile or 30 30 40 mile per hour or 35 knot stall speed flaps really aren't a necessity you, you really don't want to go any slower than that if you're landing at the airport that's awesome i love it the um, some of the performance numbers on the airplane are incredible. If you've got 400 feet of water to work with, not only can you land on it, it's enough to take off with as well, wow, that's even amazing. at the maximum gross weight on the airplane. So the performance number using the 100 horsepower Rotax engines are phenomenal. The, uh, the airplane, when we're up at altitude, uh, we've actually seen fuel flows doing 100 miles an hour, 9,500 feet up on cross countries, two and a half gallons an hour. Wow. You so, said that was the 912. Right? That's a 912 ISN. Wow, that's amazing. So they're, they're really designed to sip the fuel, and it's running on MoGas or car gas, you know, that, uh, that meets the ASTM standards, of course. Yes. The airplane's designed, uh, you know, it's carbon fiber. It does have Dacron on, on the wing area back here. Very strong, lightweight, lasts a long time. Uh, the belly of the airplane's actually carbon Kevlar. So it's a combination of, uh, you know, strength and lightweightness as well so uh, the airplanes are well designed on the water they are very much uh, like a like a jet ski there are no water rudders in the back of the airplane but the turning radius is incredibly tight at 30 35 miles an hour when you're up on the step so very maneuverable and the first time you make a tight turn with a passenger on board they actually start giggling they cannot <laughs> believe what you're doing with that airplane and the wings just stay level and you slide sideways and turn and go. That's awesome. I always try to tell people there's a big difference between a plane on floats and a flying boat. Absolutely. The, the, uh, the float planes, as you know, you know, you have to be careful if you're going downwind and you're making a turn to like to, a, you know, to get ready for taking off back into yep. the wind, you can dig a float in you know, or the wind will catch a wingtip yep. and actually flip the airplane over. We look forward to that. It's a lot of fun to basically get the airplane sliding sideways and then back into the wind and away you go. Yep, I know that feeling. It's like a jet ski. I learned to fly in a flying boat and you could land it on the water and basically slide the thing to a stop if you wanted. For people that have never landed an airplane on the water, the first time they do it, it's quite, a, it, it's quite an interesting event for me as an instructor and demonstration pilot to watch the expression on their face. When we come in for a landing, we level off it like you do at the, at, on the runway, you know, and you just, and then ease the power off and hold the pitch and let the airplane settle down. When it first touches the water, usually you hear people giggling. It's like, this is so, <laughs> I'll bet. there's nothing scary about it. It's so, you know, so simple to do. Uh, and then you make the transition and start turning around the lake and you take back off again. One of the things that I've noticed with people on the shore, when we're, landing on the water around lakes and all that. Number one, it's an airport. Number two, you're on a lake or a river and everyone that you see, they're all doing this. Oh, they're yeah. taking pictures of what you're doing out Absolutely. there. Absolutely. So I've seen that when I've flown seaplanes as well. People are very interested in it when they see you landing on the river or something. That's, that's yes. very true. We actually start producing this airplane. Serial number one was made in 2002. Um, we are currently right now on our assembly line in uh, Ipi Una, uh, Brazil, just 65 miles north of Sao Paulo. That's south of Rio de Janeiro, where the where the Olympics were just a year or so ago. Yep. Uh, currently on the assembly line right now is numbers 366 and 367. Nice. If you look at a calendar and you look at all the days of the year coming up on the 2019 calendar, 
365 plus days. We've actually made an airplane for every single day of the year. That's amazing. And that's a lot of airplanes. And along the way, we've learned a lot of lessons about the airplane. We've modified, made changes to the improve the airplane. We've been making this for almost, well, let's see, 16 years now. We've learned a lot. Our, our, our guys at the factory in, in Brazil that actually put the airplanes together are their craftsmen. I mean, the, as you can see in the quality of workmanship, just in the way the airplane looks, believe me, it goes under the skin as well. The inside of the airplane is as well designed and, and as professionally put together as you see on the outside. Very, very clean lines on the airplane. Awesome. So manufactured in Brazil, you guys are based out of Ormond Beach. That's what I thought. Yeah. I, love I just live up the street. Yes. So awesome. So and this is the website. That is our website right there. There's uh, there's a lot more information. There's specs on the airplane and some very interesting videos that you can watch the airplane fly. One of the most probably interesting of all the videos. We're human. We make mistakes. And guess what? Somebody did a landing and had a GoPro on the wing with the gear down on the water. And oh, it was geez. not planned. As a matter of fact, and he's not a test pilot. As a matter of fact, he's a doctor. And he had his eight-year-old son sitting next to him in the right Ooh. seat. And you can see the whole occurrence. I even in the, in the video, I've slowed it down a second time so that you can watch it in slow motion. What takes place? And if I can show something here on the on the tip of the nose, as he was touching down on the water, I watched the nose of the airplane to see how much tipping over effect that it might have. A lot of airplanes that are amphibs, particularly float planes, they will flip over. You know, if you land on the water with the gear down. We watched the nose of the airplane dip down about that far. Wow, it's amazing. And that is truly amazing. What you said is correct. Everybody that's got a seaplane rating, you non-seaplane pilots don't know this, but if you've got a seaplane rating, it's basically almost a fact in the industry. If you're on floats and you land with the gear down in the water, that's a 99% you're not walking away or swimming away from that crash. You're going to so remember that Because they day. flip right over. As soon as the nose gears catch, it just flips right over. That so that's amazing that this can get away with that and still be landing, survivable. The landing gear is so far aft in the fuselage, it acts like a big drag brake. You know? So when you hit the water, this gentleman's headsets came off. And of course, the first thing he did grabbed the Johnson bar to raise the landing gear up and start looking around to see if anybody saw it. So, yeah, <laughs> nobody Dude, saw it. I bet you do that. So anyhow, we, the, we maintained that airplane at the factory. They actually brought it to the factory. No damage. Just turned right around, flew it right back out of the factory. We Man. inspected it. Did not hurt the airplane at all. It's an incredibly strong I airplane. I want to look that video up. That's oh, it's amazing. right there. So if I wanted to go to Ormond Beach and take a test ride in one of these, is that could people just show up there and do it? In this airplane. And I am one can, of the pilots. Can burly my, guys do it? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So the uh, the demo airplane is this one. I mean, as beautiful as this airplane is, I've got about 200 hours on it, and it's three years old. It is so beautiful. It's so easy to maintain these airplanes. And uh, even in salt water, probably one of the neatest things about the airplane, it is designed for salt water. The spar of the airplane is carbon fiber. There's no metal in the wing. Oh, that's amazing. So you don't have that issue to deal with. How to handle the airplane after operating in brackish water or salt water is the same thing that you would do with a jet ski or a boat. You know, when you bring it in, you hose it down, you clean your airplane up. And if you do that and keep it hangered, it is going to look like this for many, many years Amazing. down the road. Does it have a bilge pump? Absolutely. When it's Living in Florida, water, every, everything I know that floats, every boat takes on water. An aircraft that land in water are no exception. It's going to do the same thing, yep. and it is designed to go in a V-shaped hull at the bottom. And when it runs to the back end, where it's the, the lowest point in the airplane, yep, yep. there is a float switch that's on the battery. No master switch required. It's hot battery connected. And when the float switch activates, it turns on the pump. And that bilge pump in here will pump out 2,000 gallons an hour. Wow, it's awesome. It's an automatic bilge pump. Automatic that system. You, know, you can be at the hotel. I love it. So how are we at time-wise? We doing good? Uh, we got 30%. Really? Oh, man. 30 so minutes? What else do you want to do? We got, no, we got more. I get all amped up and stuff. Now, I, I'm not supposed to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Out of all the light sport flying boats, sea, seaplanes available, this is my favorite. It has been since the first day I saw it. And Thank you, Mike. There's some nice seaplanes here at, at this event. There really are. I'm happy to see that because I love this, the flying boats. This one's still my favorite. And one more thing on that. What's the price of this aircraft? Well, I love to ask people, you know, when they ask me what the price of the airplane is, I say, okay, do you want the base price 
Or do you yeah. want the fully loaded? We'll flight? start with base, and then we could go towards fully loaded. Okay. Because well, it's the same with every airplane. What panel do you want? The brake, the base price with the 912 IS engine is one hundred and eighty-nine thousand dollars. So now let's let's move on down. We'll go right to the other end. The fully loaded airplane with everything in it is one hundred and eighty-nine thousand dollars. It comes fully loaded. There's wow. only one way to get it. That's amazing. We do give you some options though with the airplane. Things that you can change. Okay. You see the color of the stripe on the side? Yeah. That's the end of the option list right there. What color do you want? Blue. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, then we can do that. You weren't for asking you. me that. You're uh, never mind. <laughs> so we can do that. The panel on this is. Uh, take a look here. We are Garmin G3X Dual, and uh, my my older like three-year-old airplane. Yeah, the, Gar the Gar Garmin, but the I Garmin, like the, the Garmin G3X nice system on both sides, and that includes ADS-B transponder, yeah. autopilot system, the whole full awesome. Garmin system. That is awesome. It is a wonderful airplane. So, is there anything else you think we should know about this airplane? We've got, well, I've talked about the number of airplanes that we've yep. got. We entered the U.S. market. We're really proud about a couple of things. We are now the largest selling force for Skoda Aeronautica in Brazil. We sell more airplanes per year in the United States than they do anywhere else in the entire world. And, uh, excuse me a minute, I know you're going to edit some of this out. Of well, I wasn't worried about the auto. He just got a little squirrely for a second, like, corner of my eye. We're, we're live, live but they expect you to noise. Yes. Airplane noise at an airport, that's our helicopter <laughs> noise at an airport. Uh, last month I delivered two airplanes, and they were milestone airplanes for us. When you enter this market, you know, in, in light sport or any type of airplanes, you know, one of the things that you have to be able to provide uh, to your potential buyers is financing, aircraft financing. You know, so far we've relied strictly on cash buyers to buy our airplane. Well, numbers 359 and 360, those last two airplanes that I brought in and we assembled, did the final assembly for them here. One went to a flight school that's never been done before. We're now with the uh, Treasure Coast Seaplanes down in Vera Beach, Florida. They've got one of our airplanes that they're, awesome. that they're teaching in. And the, uh, the other one was financed through a company we all know, AOPA Aircraft Financing. Wow. And I just sold another airplane last week, and it's number two on AOPA Financing. Well, that brings me up to two more points. That's great information. Um, and the next point would be in insurance. How hard is it to get insurance on something like this? We've never had any trouble at all. So with that, Lee Blankenship uh, owns Lima Bravo Aircraft Insurance. I'm familiar with them. Yeah, and, and Lee's a lovely lady. She's very professional, and she believed in us from the very beginning. She's insured our airplanes from day one. So we have recommended her to our buyers, and I would say at this point probably 90% of our owners are insured through Lima Bravo Aviation Insurance. Oh, that's great. We interviewed her last year. Um, my next question I want to ask service centers. So if I buy this, I mean, you guys are in Norman Beach, that's great, but what if I live in Las Vegas, Nevada, and like to fly out on Lake Mead or up and down the Colorado River or something? The, the airplane basically doesn't need, other than the compliance inspections, we run a training operation as well. We're not just a, uh, you know, sell you an airplane and we disappear and, and uh, uh, we teach the ground schools for the pilots and the owners. There's a lot to know as an owner about an airplane like this, the maintenance, compliance, inspections, and all that. So we teach the new owners everything they need to know and or their mechanics and or their pilot friends, you know, that, that come to our ground school courses. Um, we've got complete service, you know, at Ormond Beach. That's yes, awesome. that's true. But there are three warranties on the airplane. One is the airframe, 100 hours, one year. Of 100 hours of flight time in one year. We'll warranty anything that is airplane fuselage, you know, particular type of thing. Yep. Then there's the Rotex warranty, which is uh, about the same length. It's not from much different. The Rotex Center for here in Florida, of course, is Lakewood, uh, and they are in Sebring, Florida, you know, and they're the, the, the recognized service center for Rotex. And then the other one is Garmin. So, those are separate warranties from those manufacturers, sure. not through us. But there's never been an issue at all. So all if right, you've got Ro a Rotex problem, Rotex will handle Rotex it. Rotex is a popular engine, and I am Rotex certified amongst other stuff. And uh, according to Rotex, any Rotex certified mechanic been to their school can work on that engine under warranty. So that shouldn't be any problem finding somebody like that anywhere in the USA if it needs to be done. Being that the airplane is not experimental, it is important that, that they have a 
uh, repairman certificate with the maintenance license and he's got it in his pocket he knows exactly <laughs> what I'm talking about because there's always a lot of confusion about that if you have an inspection uh, you know, uh, 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 what they call it, a repairment certificate with the inspection. You cannot do this. Okay. So, uh, I'm, I'm getting the high sign. They're out of time. I see that. I appreciate it, sir. Thank My you very pleasure. much. Thanks, this is guys. Mike Daniels at uh, the Land uh, Sport Aviation Showcase signing off. We'll see you guys again in an hour. Well, thank you, Elizabeth, David Allen, Dave Shellbetter, and Rory's holding the mic right now. David Allen was working cameras. See ya.